usually for these uh, 100 day project speed paintings, I'm going to talk to you and I just wanted to give a brief update uh, with regards to how the project is going for me. I am loving it. It has been the first year that I've attempted the project where I didn't give myself a theme. I'm not, you know, trying to do, um, like a specific time frame. Like the first year it was like 10 minutes on canvas. Um, I'm not, uh, limiting myself in any way. Like the second year where it was no drawing this year, I'm just, um, limiting myself only in terms of the size. I'm just using this, uh, watercolor paper. I bought a stack of it. I think it was 250 sheets of it uh, from um, Amazon. And it's not the best watercolor paper, but so far it's standing up to everything that I'm throwing at it. I'm working in my working studio where I actually film classes. So I have everything I could ever possibly want or need in front of me at any given moment. I just reach... Um, and everything is here and I'm doing it pretty much first thing in the morning. So I'll get up, I'll do whatever little, uh, admin tasks I have to do. So clear the inbox, send the newsletter, uh, upload, uh, yesterday's, um, offering. So I'm doing these a day ahead at all times, just so that I'm on top of the project. These speed paintings are meant to be inspirational rather than instructional. If I were instructing, these um, videos would be, you know, between an hour and two hours long. Uh, and there is no way for me to have the time to actually do the project and do like voiceovers or supplies lists or anything like that. So. Um, let's just have some mercy here with regards to that and have some grace with regards to that, that the only way this project is going to work for me is if it stays inspirational versus instructional. I do, however, want you to know that I'm a kitchen sink mixed media artist. I, in any given moment, will reach for acrylics, paints, acrylic inks, watercolors, I will reach for black gesso, white gesso. I will reach for the um, heavy bodied acrylics from Golden and the fluid acrylics from Golden. I've also got a ton of watercolor palettes that I will reach for on any given day. Uh, I've got markers, I've got colored pencils, Stabilo All pencils, which are like my magic wand. I use these a lot. Faber-Castell pit pens, uh, which are an India ink that dry waterproof, but there's a little bit of a cure time so you can smoosh them around. Uni Posca paint pens. I mostly use the black and white, but once in a while I reach for these color ones. But my favorite black and white ones are the um, TC-1MR, and they're a 0.7 millimeter pin type, and I love them. Uh, I also, you'll often see me spray. So if you see me spray, it's probably this Krylon Workable Fixative. And what this does is it lets me go on top of water-soluble stuff like the uh, Stabilo All Pencil, the watercolors, and then I can go on with anything else without smearing what happened before. So let's keep this project as low impact uh, for me as possible so that I can actually get through it. Because if I had to, again, do, you know, voiceovers or supplies lists or anything like that, it would just not work out. But that being said, like, comment below. And I'm happy to ask answer your questions. Um, I can generally remember what it is I used on any given video. If you tell me the timestamp of the uh, moment when you have a question about something that I did... Um, I will be absolutely happy to look at that timestamp and tell you what happened there. Some people have been asking about this palette in particular because it comes out. I pull it out a lot. As you can see, this is the Magic Wand Tin from Jane Davenport. Uh, a set of her colored pencils came in this tin. But then I bought um, these magnetic strips 
and uh, glued these, uh, this one obviously the glue has let go, but I hot glued uh, little um, half pans into this, uh, these mag onto these magnetic strips so that these actually stay put. And this is a combination of colors. So I believe in here I have the Jane Davenport Neutrals and the Jane Davenport Brights. And I also have a ton of QOR or core colors, which are the golden watercolors with the fancy binder that they use. And there may be a few Danielle Smiths in here as well, but it's just kind of like a master palette of all of the colors that I am most likely to reach for. This is the uh, Fine Tuck. Uh, metallic watercolors and this is great because these pans come out and you can replace them. In fact, Bijan's, which is the art supply store near me, actually has these a la carte so I can replace the colors as I run out of them. You'll see me reach for these quite a bit to work with in conjunction with Black Gesso, which is uh, just these two together work amazing to create galaxy-like effects. Um, and then let's see if I can reach, pardon me, nope, that's not it. Uh, nope, that's not it. I have a watercolor palette that somebody asked me about that I can no longer find. Oh, there it is. This is, I'm not sure if this tin is even available anymore, but this is a QOR travel tin. So it's just got your basic mixing kit uh, from QOR, a core. I, I will reach for this a lot. It's got a lot of the colors that I tend to reach for. Uh, some of you have been asking, like, what colors are you mixing with? I do not know. Um, most of these are not in any way labeled. Uh, so a magenta, an orange, uh, a green gold. If you're looking for the kind of inspiration that you can copy stroke by stroke, I'm afraid. I'm not your Huckleberry um, because I, I don't know. I just reach for whatever color is rocking my Pop-Tarts at any given moment. Um, these palettes, which are from Prima Marketing, come with names, uh, but they're not refillable. So once you run out of a color, I don't think you can buy a replacement. I could be wrong about that. You could check on Amazon and see that I have eight of these. Um, the Currents one, the Complexion one. Um, this one is the Decadent Pies. I have a um, Terrain. I have, what's this one, Woodlands, like there's just a ton of them. And I love them because the colors work well together. So I don't have to think overly much about color when I'm working with these palettes. I just reach for a palette and they work well together. And Bob is your uncle. You're also going to see me at some point, I'm sure, reach for the Caran d'Ache Neocolor 2 crayons, which are water-soluble crayon. Um, they are basically watercolor, uh, kind of opaque watercolor in a crayon form. So you can use it as a crayon and then activate it with water on a clean brush to get uh, your watercolor effects going. And, uh, and then anything else that I reach for um, I've got a ton of stuff in my studio, lots of stamps. Uh, I have a collection of alphabet stamps. I have probably six of these little collections of alphabet stamps. My favorite ink pad is the Archival Ink by Ranger. I also really like the Stays On, um, but the Archival Ink by Ranger, you can buy the refills in a bottle, so you can just refresh uh, your... Um, your inks. So I've got like tons of these little alphabet sets because I do like to keep the journaling and my art journaling practice, although this 100 days project has not seen a whole lot of text. I am extremely fond of the Liquitex acrylic inks. 
Um, I have a bunch of these. I used to use a lot of sprays. I don't use as many anymore, but when I do, it uh, tends to be these Marabou sprays. These do dry waterproof. And then I also really like the Dilutions uh, sprays as well. There are a couple of colors that I get in the um, Dilutions that I'm obsessed with. For example, the Pure Sunshine is definitely one of my favorites. Uh, and I think, you know, that about covers it. If I'm doing collage, I will use the TriArt version of Gel Medium or Polymer Medium because it's less expensive than Golden but does exactly the same thing. I stay away from Mod Podge just because I find it yellows. And uh, Clear Gesso is another thing that I always have in my studio. This bottle is probably 10 years old. Um, but I use this when I want to create a new ground or a toothy ground on top of something I've already done that will allow me to then go on to use other mediums. I don't reach for oil stuff uh, at all. I have oil pastels. I think I've used them once, but they're not really in my wheelhouse. Um, I have pan pastels, but again, I don't tend to use those. I tend to be very much a loose, loose, loose fluid, um, and then seal it, and then detail, 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 tend until a piece feels finished to me. And this is my project thus far. Uh, so this, I've just, I'm just keeping these in this folder until I figure out what to do with them. I have the feeling that this is going to lead me to another project, uh, like an oracle deck or an inspiration deck of some kind um, that I haven't, I haven't thought that far ahead. But these are my days so far. What I'm really enjoying about this process is the freedom aspect of things. I'm really not allowing myself to go into a stressed out place with this project. I am just literally painting whatever I want. I'm reaching for the first color. I'm using symbols that I enjoy. Um, sometimes there are words, sometimes there aren't. Sometimes the paintings are portrait and sometimes the paintings are landscape. And it's really meant to be playful. So I'm just playing as best I can. Some, sometimes uh, some of what I'm doing is reminiscent of things I've done before. I love these swirly girls. I do these quite often. Uh, I love these lip up girls. I do these quite often. But sometimes they're like way outside of my comfort zone. Like I don't even know what the heck that is. But I don't care, right? Like it was an experiment. I learned some stuff. I enjoyed it. Um, I'm starting to reach more and more for these fluorescent colors that I'm really enjoying having as part of my pieces. Um, so it's just all experimental. This is my favorite so far. Um, I would love this massive, like 11 by 14 or something. That would be awesome. So it's just really free. I'm just feeling really free with these paintings and just literally doing whatever it is that I feel like doing on any given day. And then, of course, because this is a practice um, that is less formal, is more casual than the other things that I do, it's going to inform the other things that I do, right? So, like, m maybe I do a swirly girl and then I'll come in and I'll do something similar um, to, to that in a bigger format for my actual art journaling process. Um, this, this is a lip up girl that was inspired by another lip up girl. So having the prime or the pump primed through the um, 100 day project is really working for me. You can see here that I have long had a practice of these five by seven or smaller pieces of art that get tucked in to my art journal. Uh, you'll usually find me in my Facebook group. I love an interactive spread. Um, the Wilderhood doing uh, monthly, or sorry, Monday paintings 
three times a month I'll go in and I'll do these monthly paintings for the duration of the 100 day project um, these paintings that I'm doing oh see here's a swirly girl these paintings that I'm doing will be part of my project um, but this is my main sort of practice is we call this book of days there's a new session of book of days that's going to be starting very shortly stay tuned for news on that um, but I just like tucking them in and keeping these I think of them as like altar cards or affirmation cards into the journal so that they have a place to live um, and you know sometimes I'll even make pockets so that things have a place to live so that's kind of where I'm at I don't work a lot on loose paper so this has been a really interesting um, experience for me I'm starting to get people asking can I buy that and I'm uh, that's weird for me um, but I understand because there are paintings that I see out on the socials um, that I want as well so as of right now the answer is no my originals will not be available for sale but I may put them up as um, prints that you can purchase from my red bubble shop I just haven't I just haven't the time right now to properly scan them um, and get them looking the way I want them to look if they're going to be prints so that's my 100 day project so far this is day 12 the last time I did this project I got up to day 50 that playlist is linked below I was not happy with the body of work I created for that project it was not it just wasn't in my wheelhouse I'd limited myself way too much and I was working way too big and so I was experiencing a lot of pressure and I think that's why I probably quit at the 50 day mark but I find like 50 days is great so if you're doing this project and you're stressing yourself out about like I want to do all 100 days like maybe don't be mean to yourself about it like maybe cut yourself some slack like for example if you skip a day that doesn't mean your project is over right you can just pick up where you left off and if at the end of your experience in 2024 you end up with 30 new pieces of work or 50 new pieces of work or even 10 new pieces of work that's 10 more pieces of work than you would have otherwise had so I encourage you just to go easy on yourself so to summarize what we discussed today the 100 day project is going well for me I'm really enjoying it I'm really enjoying keeping it light keeping it playful no stress having it just be a thing I do I just sit down after I do my admin stuff and I do it I'm really enjoying doing the speed paintings for you but I really cannot make the speed paintings any more comprehensive uh, they are strictly meant to be inspirational and not instructional if you're looking for instruction I, I always have classes on the go you can check those out at effiebirdwild.podia.com and you'll also find me in collaborations here and there as well uh, so if you're wanting something more in depth um, I do have classes I also have a patreon account where you can get not only updates about the 100 day project but book of mirrors which is a monthly art journaling program or moonshine light which is a monthly um, art journaling program so you can check out my instruction style stuff there um, you also can sign up to get ad free downloadable versions of my Monday prayers to the moon program which happens live in my Facebook group um, but the patrons get them in an organized place and they get them ad free and downloadable so that's my update I hope that that uh, was informative for you I'm going to settle in now to do my day 12 lots of love and I will see you in all of our places which you will find linked below and yeah I adore you thank you for being here
Mm-hmm.